Hello everyone, this is Super Dimensional Bun. Today I'll be reviewing um, Bandai's high grade 144 scale Blitz Gundam from the series Gundam Seed. Uh, this kit was produced in 2003 and currently retails for um, 1200 yen. Uh, to note that this is one of the original, well, came out in the original release and um, not the 2013 release, which was, uh, I guess, the revived version, which came out in act actual correct colors. I say that because um, when this kit came out, it was all molded in wrong colors. Uh, the black areas were all molded in a kind of a blue, dark blue color. These parts that are purple were all a uh, light grayish, bluish color. Don't know what was going through their minds at the time, but um, yeah, I I painted this kit <laughs> anyway. So let's go ahead and get started with a closer look at the kit. The front, see the amount of details with the kit. I have to say this is one of my favorite kits from the series. It's definitely a unique kit for most Gundams out there. Um, it's more rounded for one. Um, Kind of a, yeah, kind of, I don't say crazy look, but uh, uh, say more evil look than most Gundams out there. Anyway, let's go ahead and start with the articulation. So a head's connected by a polycap ball joint. Uh, get around, so the head gets a little stuck on the shoulder pieces. Okay, let's go ahead and do the arms. So of course, peg and polycap. This is 2003 technology, or engineering. Okay, that's as far up as the arm can go. Okay, the arm itself, it's been 360. It's a little, a little tight, but I can do it. Um, okay, elbow bends only 90 degrees, and of course the hand is um, connected by a polycap joint. Of course, spin 360. There you go. And let's take a look at the waist. Of course, um, some of the parts hinder its movement, so it starts off here. Maybe 30, 40 degrees turn from each side. Okay. Skirt armor on the sides goes that far. Front skirt armor. Doesn't get it really get in the way. You can actually do a kneeling pose with this kit. Of course, it'll look a little wonky, but it's possible. There you go. I think at the time it was kind of a revolutionary piece of engineering at the time that uh, a Gundam can kneel. I remember that was one of the main selling points um, when the either the Strike or the uh, Dual Gundam came out. Okay, now the leg. Let's get that out of the way. Goes up pretty high. And if the leg was straight, that's as far back as it goes. Well, maybe it goes out to the side a little bit because of the skirt armor. Okay. And this thing can bend decent amounts. Okay, now how wide can this thing squat? About 90, 90 degrees. Okay, now the feet. This is where um, this kit can differentiate from most kits out there. Oh, first thing I want to know is there's a little flap here. 
covers the, uh, the front part of uh, the leg. And so it can kneel out a little bit. Kind of a nice feature. Now this foot doesn't bend backwards very far. But of course with that flap in the front it could bend forward a lot. So the leg can actually stand like so, even though I don't know what pose you would do to make it stand that way. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the ankle. So this kit in particular has a wide range of ankle movement. Um, and it's part, part, part due to the, this little design of the foot. Now, the front part's obviously very, is independent of the rest um, of the leg. Okay, let's go back to this angle. So it bends upward, but can twist side. It can go all the way around and back. Now, you can, that means you, this guy can do quite quite a range of splits and still have the feet firmly planted. At least the front part of the feet. One of the poses in the box art has this guy standing in a pretty wide stance. Okay, let's turn it at a different angle so you can see how much it will move apart. It's so pretty good engineering for a 2003 model kit, but uh, yeah, it was pretty impressed at the time. And this is obviously a pretty fierce looking kit, all these pointy edges and whatnot. That's part of the appeal. Now, I'm going to need a little help for figuring out what these weapons are called. So we got the pincer, pincer lock. All these things are named in German for some reason. Now it fits in the left forearm like so. It has a polycap in form. Now it's kind of the weird clunky part, uh, clunky things of this kit is that the forearms um, have these, I don't know, blocks. Uh, kind of looks out of place on the kit since everything's rounded and smooth. But anyway, so this is supposed to pop out, shoot around. Um, let me show the accessories that come with it. So there's a stand that comes with this. I don't know if you can see it. I did not paint this stand, so this was the original color of the kit. It's kind of a grayish, dark gray, bluish hue to it. It should have been black. Anyway. So this kit also comes with a came with a piece of wire and two connectors. So let's go ahead and show you how it connects. This part is connected by a poly cap. Now, if I can only remember which uh, which piece goes where, I think they're the same. No, they're not. <laughs> okay, here we go. This part goes there, and this part goes into the forearm. I think I'm doing it upside down. Oh. Okay, so you can see here, it's just a wire and it hooks around plastic connector. Okay, here we go. I think the, even the, the wire is the wrong color. It should have been like a red or green. I forget what it was supposed to be. Okay, so it's supposed to look like this, and you can mount the pincer on this little stand. And there goes the blitz. Died just like in the show. <laughs> anyway, now that is not the only accessory that comes with the kit. Now, this pincer, the front part of the pincer, can detach. And comes with three little open claws. Just want to make sure I'm putting it in the right places. Here you go. Two. And 
three. Ooh. So there you go. Close position, which is just a big old point, and open claw. Let's put this, <laughs> let me give you a better stance so you can stand up better. it in too far. Anyway. That's how it's supposed to look like, sort of. Alright, let's just move on. You can't move on with this thing hanging in this forearm. Okay. So, next accessory is, okay, let's see if I can pronounce this, the Trichus Offensive Shield. So here's a shield and the beam rifle that comes in it. So, there's the beam rifle. And it comes with um, several, well, three uh, darts. I had a name for it, but I don't, oh, that's right, lance darts. Now, there's only one that moves. You can take out, and you can actually pull this whole thing out, like so, and put it back in. Now this connects by this little flat peg into the right forearm. So let's put it in the hand first, and then connect it. Can't say it stays in place all the time, but. Um, It just depends. It's all on friction. See, once uh, you move it around a little too much, it just pops right out. You need quite a bit of painting on this one, obviously. It was all one color originally. Okay. Now, there's also a beam saber that's stored in this um, shield. If you can see that, the purple handle right here. Um, no, no, there's no beam saber that was included with this kit that goes in there. But if you happen to have um, a plastic beam saber from another Gundam kit, this one easily fits in and it's compatible. Let's get you in there. There you go. So, a bit of happy news right there. And also, it's compatible with the newer revived versions of, let's say, the. Uh, um, the Strike or the Freedom Gundam beam sabers, which is, which are much longer. I don't know if you can see that. There's this one, and here's the other one. See the difference is about an inch. Yeah, makes the whole thing look taller than the kit itself. Okay. Let's go ahead and just take that off. So those are the two main accessories, the uh, pincer and the shield. Whoa. Let's take a quick comparison now of the other, with uh, some, a couple other kits. Once I get this thing to stand up right. All right. So here is the Strike Gundam, Gundam from the Revive version, actually. You can see its proportions are skinnier than uh, the original kits itself. This is how to make the revived versions these days. Uh, they have proportions at the time, at the 2003, were pretty good. Um, and I still think it's pretty good proportions. Um, it doesn't look too overly skinny or um, too fat in any general area. I guess my only complaint is just the size of the feet. Eh, they don't look too bad, actually. Um, the other Gundams from uh, the same series have wider feet. Now, let's just, for, for sake of comparison, put this against the Zaku from Gundam Sea Destiny. Now, the Zaku makes everything look skinny compared to itself, but, um, yeah. 
is nice nice difference i i i don't know uh painting thing painting tips well well let me just quickly show you the sticker sheet that came with it here's the so obviously it's made out of foil and there's a lot of red so i don't think there was any part of this kit that was red maybe these parts but that's that's about it and of course yeah the face things you'll need to paint um this yellow dot in the chest of course they, they did provide a sticker uh, of course at the time i didn't want to use any of the stickers um the shield it only came in one color you'll need to paint that These little purple ends to the darts yeah lots of red on this kit pretty much all the red on this kit needs to be painted in even the head um, if you've got the newer version you probably don't need to do as much painting um, I had to paint almost I painted this whole kit <laughs> Maybe because it was just wrong <laughs> anyway um, pros of this kit well it's definitely a different look to a Gundam um, this is pretty much your standard Gundam right here the strike Gundam but uh, the Blitz is definitely a much fiercer looking beast um, nice color scheme to it everything goes pretty smoothly with it weapons are unique you don't even see anything like that it's posability is pretty good um, I was see what stances it can make um, yeah, definitely a unique kit. 1200 yen, not a bad price. Um, well, and t 2003 t uh, engineering wasn't that bad, so uh, it was it was quite a nice step compared to the, everything before that. Um, I guess this series that came out was Turn A, and that was the last of the series that came out with 2444 scales that were not high grade. Um, cons. Well, if you get the original version, you'll need to paint this thing to make it look accurate. But uh, newer, not revived versions, but the remastered versions um, were better, came better color matching. And they had some uh, decals that came with it that you can decorate the kits. And um, came with a hip part that you can use on the um, action bases. These, this kit didn't have, doesn't have a plug in its crotch. So anyway, but my recommendation is, yeah, if you like the design, if uh, it's, it's uh, definitely a, a unique looking Gundam, it's all black. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely uh, it's very stealthy looking. Yeah, uh, it's built for stealth. Um, yeah, but I I really enjoyed having this kit. It's one of my favorites from the series. Um, that's and well, yeah, it's probably my probably my uh, my favorite next to the uh, Stray Gundam. But, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this review. I realize I'm going a little too long. Um, yeah, Gun Gundam Bus uh, the Blitz Gundam. It's um, 1,200 yen. You know, catch it if you can. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys next time.